Hello. Hello, Mr. Yogi Shambhu. Well, wow. Incredible, incredible effect. I, I should blend in, I think, a bit. Let's see. This is, you represent Earth, I represent the galaxy. So we're having a chat about what's going on, right? That's perfect. So why don't you give a bit of context to our viewers as to the, uh, what we want to get done here in this session. And yeah, just start from there. Great. So there's, there's a, a big happening happening right now with regards to the, um, well, to the, to the COVID-19. Uh, we have a lot of people afraid. We have a lot of people that are taking mass action. And then we have, um, and then we have things that are happening this, in the midst of that. And that's what I'm really interested in because it's, uh, you know, I've attempted to wrap my head around uh, the concept that um, viruses uh, are not in fact infectious, but uh, bacteria of course is infectious, but um, that viruses are dead and not able to be passed unless they are injected into you. And so then we look at now what is, you know, what is causing these symptoms that we call the COVID-19. Um, and so with that, now I, I haven't been able to really get a sense of what side of that argument I actually agree with, but I do know that there is a hell of a lot going on in the world in the midst of this. And, uh, and it seems there's some, some, some unanswered questions around well, what's happening before this. Um, and I really want to talk to you about that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to start off or you want to ask a question or? Yeah, why don't I, I can um, start off just by, I'll say that more succinctly. And then, uh, cause I would really love to, in a sense, I would really like to be interviewing you, getting your perspective on things. I don't know exactly your, I mean, I kind of get, get a sense of what, what your viewpoint is, but I don't exactly know the specifics of any way of what you've been tapping into. Okay. Great. Uh, so do you, do you have any questions that you want me to ask you specifically? No, I, I guess just why don't you frame it and, and sort of give a, again, a larger context as to what's happening in the world, how it's affecting you, what, you, what do you see uh, happening, and then at some point just pass the ball over and I'll add my perspective. Okay, that sounds great, great. So are we, are, do you want to talk about COVID-19 or do you want to talk about more about 5G separate from COVID-19 is happening, being pushed through quickly in the midst of it? Well, I guess that, that would be my entry point. I want to look at the relationship between the two and um, give a bit of context as to what's leading up to this. And Great. it seems to me that a lot of times when we speak that you're coming at it from the personal health point of view, I'm coming at it from the global political point of view. Uh, and then we kind of mix and match, but we, we, we tend to have sort of like different perspectives coming together, which I, I find always good because you're bringing something to the puzzle, which I'm not as, as I am. Great. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna get something so that I'm a bit ra raised up. Wouldn't that be a bit better? Just for a second. Guardians. This is Captain Sweep having a chat with Yogi Shambu. We're going to dive deep into the relationship of the virus with 5G and give you a perspective that perhaps you haven't seen before because we're in the end of times, we're in the beginning of times. And where do you stand? Where is your line of sand? Who are you as a policy guardian? I know 
that the viewing audience is always exceptionally interested in our changing aesthetic. <laughs> yes. Oh, of course. Now, um, great. So you're going to press record when you're ready. And one, two, three, go. Hello, my name is Shambhu or y Yogi Shambhu. And I'm here with Elijah Ignatieff of the Planetary Guardians. And uh, we are here to discuss some of the current events that are happening right now. So we are reaching all of you as uh, we all are in uh, lockdown and uh, in response to the global happenings of COVID-19. So I started to get interested in what was not only happening uh, with this health concern itself, but also what was happening while we were all locked down. And so that's something that I'm really interested in talking to Elijah about. We have a situation now where we're coming from a year of unprecedented uprising and uh, where even Time Magazine said that the uprising, that, pr that protest was the happening of the year to now zero. We have lockdowns uh, with protests around um, the critical infrastructure of pipelines and uh, gas uh, drilling, uh, where now there are many states in the, the United States that it's in fact illegal to even be protesting these things. And this is all happening very rapidly. We, we have a huge bailout that happened with the, uh, our government here in, in, in Canada, where there's uh, a $6 billion bailout that happened. Um, and now more um, relief funding is being changed. <coughs> into that area. And as you can see, Elijah is allergic to these types of things. <laughs> um, in a, let's just see here. Um, while all this is going on and in response to the crisis, we have Indonesia, we have Victor Organ uh, really cracking down and uh, making himself a totalitarian ruler in the Philippines. They're calling for violence to actually uh, enforce the lockdown. We have in Indonesia is actually spraying certain areas with drones, di uh, a disinfectant, raising a lot of concerns around uh, toxins and of course privacy because they're flying these drones around all uh, you know private dwellings etc. In Tunisia, they actually have police robots, if you've seen this, enforcing the lockdown, uh, checking people's IDs, uh, and asking them what is happening, why are they out on the streets. And in South Korea, they've amassed now a massive cell phone database, uh, really ascertaining who is at risk. And so uh, that is just some of you know, the highlights of what's going on. Mm. And then we have, in context to all this, we have uh, a rollout of a brand new level of uh, electromagnetic frequencies, the 5G, and, and this is happening. And this is happening at a, a very interesting time. In as much as we're all locked down, but it's all rolling forward as quickly as possible. So with that and a whole lot of questions, I turn that to you, Elijah, and ask you, uh, in your perspective, what have you been looking into? What have you been putting together? Mm. Thank you, Mr. Yogi Chair. Always good to see you. Oh. It is good to see you. I feel like this is this is a, a different type of media. This is just a, like a chat between two people sharing knowledge. Uh, not quite like a platform of the corporate media, but done from our own point of view of research, done from our own point of view of what we've been tracking for a number of years. But I think you have to take into account a, a larger perspective of time and go back, of course, to the 
9-11 as being a pivotal moment in, in the century. And that's when everything started to really change. That was kind of like the mid game and now we're in the end game. And everything leading up to that was the pre, but there's this, whether you call it the new world order or the Illuminati, or the, uh, the, I like to call them the freaking nutballs, is there's an underlying design behind these events that is usually, you can usually tell if the entire corporate media system is blaring the same message over and over and over and over and over again. And right now it's with this virus. And as you said just before, humanity's uprising, there's millions on the streets, France is crazy, Hong Kong is crazy, you could catch on, and then all of a sudden, boom. What is the one thing they could do to get everyone to obey health and safety? Who is going to argue against real pandemic? Who is going to say, no, let's not do that? I mean, you got it. Like there's this normal broadband of thinking that is the normal people. Then there's the freaking nutballs. And then there's the kind of uh, I don't know, spiritual warriors, or people that are more conscious and aware of the underlying foundational issues at stake away from the corporate interpretation that has led to us. So to me, we're on the fringe of that. We're people who are giving feedback to the species in a new way because we get to do the media. We're not being controlled by a corporate media system that's been there forever that doesn't allow alternatives to the narrative to show up. And so I think right now, this virus, we have, as you said, an underlying rollout of 5G. And that, to me, is the big story. That's the big thing that needs attention because they've never done any health research regarding a full grid matrix of new electronic electronics that are gonna affect us, the animals, the insects, and the whole way of life on the planet in ways we just don't know. Some people say it's not gonna affect us, other people it's really gonna affect us, but we just don't know. So how could you have this global rollout without a deeper, understanding of what you're doing. And this to me is the height of human ignorance. And it can only come as a result of greed. It can only come from these freaking nutballs that don't want to take into account the deeper science or the deeper reasons why you might not want to do it because it's going to take their money grab away or it's going to take their control grab away or it's going to take whatever it is that they are trying to do right now. And for the most part is to put more controls on human beings from waking We talked about event 201. Is that something that you're aware of, event 201? Event 201 was a uh, global pandemic practice run that happened in October of last year. And so where they actually got together, I think it was uh, the Bill Gates Fat Foundation was a big, a big part of this and, and looking at preparedness and uh, what are you doing um, within each country to get, you know, to be ready for this type of thing and basically laid this whole thing out and then three months after this happens. So it's a good thing that they did the practice run, right? Not knowing exactly what that is. And again, not uh, at this point, I'm not laying any conclusions, but I am wondering, you know, why this practice run? Why this uh, timing around this? It just raises again, more questions. And, you know, you're talking about 5G and the rollout and, the, and but then I'm thinking, well, what happened over, you know, the last 100 years when it, it comes to EMFs? Uh, you know, one person had noted that we are, you know, over a billion times um, higher exposure rate than 100 years ago of EMFs. And as you said, you know, we have no conclusive uh, human studies on the long-term health effects of these frequencies. We do know that they have 
an influence, a thermal influence, but they also have an influence on, on the water within our body. You know, they are water destabilizing frequencies. And so what, um, what are the health effects of that? And, and I'll go back through the last 100 years or so. We had 1918, the introduction of radio waves for the first time. And so we, we had suddenly a huge influx. And then what happened then? There was, you know, the Spanish flu was at that time. Uh, World War II, when radar came in, we suddenly had thousands of radar waves. These, and so there was another pandemic that happened around that time. And then in 1968, there uh, was what? Satellites were introduced into the Van Halen belt. And so you have all of these satellites that are introduced and a great health uh, circumstance happened then and if people want to look into this they can look in it's a book called invisible Ra rainbow um, and that talks about this so then we have you know we have 3g 4g and 4g is here in victoria but I know where you are in Vancouver, 5G is already starting to really be in, at least installed. Um, what do you know about the plans or um, what people, you know, what the powers that be are doing to ensure that 5G rolls out? And where is it rolling out? Where has it rolled out? Well, there seems to be an interesting correspondence between countries that have 5G going out, like Spain and Italy, that have the high virus outbreak. And this, this, is, this is a sort of a, a connection which most people aren't going to make right away. And there's a lot of resistance to whenever you bring information that is sort of going against the party line. But if there's a direct correlation between 5G affecting people and then as you said, the virus isn't spreading because of something specifically contagion. It's spreading because our immune system is getting attacked or vibrated by these waves. And so something is happening in the body. And what if you know, they turn on these, these 5G transmitters and all of a sudden all these people start getting sick since they're very close to what they're saying is, is the COVID virus. So, this is something they do not want us to look at. So there's gonna be huge resistance to that. And you can already see it in Facebook where there's these fact checking things coming up. It's just like the level of uh, 1984-type things is increasing almost exponentially as they're trying to get people not to put attention on this 5G. And that's one of the biggest things about this, this virus. And it's not to say that people you shouldn't put attention to it, but if you look at all the other things going on the planet that create death for people and how little attention they get, but they create so much death for humans, why don't they get this type of attention? No, it's, it's, it's because the corporate media and then their masters above are putting out a design program to make sure the body does roll out. As it doesn't roll out, it's kind of like there, there's always this assumption that's okay. It's going to be too high. It's something that you can't stop. There's no assumption that uh, humans want this huge good system to go on the planet without any type of research. And that's the goal, I think, of the community media, or the, this type of alternative media, where we have to get the idea to people's minds question first the fight in, in a new way different way and in a way that maybe creates like a year of a moratorium so it's a lot of different cities are starting to wake up maybe this isn't a good people to the city level the country level but just the time they don't care about it and that's one of the, the strangest thing about this whole thing around the virus all of this care about health and yet if you go underneath everything it's the exact opposite of it so mm. Interesting. It would make sense to me that with health being so 
fragile for so many or the immune system being high is, um, is of such importance that you would take a pause, a moratorium on the development of these things. Now, we just looked at Sprint and T-Mobile just had a huge merger this week uh, and that uh, and their whole future, they're banking their whole future on 5G rollout. You have uh, really uh, an unprecedented amount of, of focus and we're talking commitment. You know, when you look at the infrastructure that is necessary, well, we're not just talking about an increase in satellites. So they are talking about a massive increase of not only satellites, but they are generators of, me of uh, microwave frequencies um, to, to get this going on that top part of the relay. But we're talking about two to three of these relays for every couple of blocks, you know, because these these ground towers for 5G have to be in the sight of one another. And so you can just imagine the infrastructure that is like, how, how did people buy into this idea? You know, I, and so yes, we're talking about a download speed of, you know, a hundred times what uh, 4G is. And, um, and now with the lockdown, you're looking at the perfect justification for it. Well, everyone's at home and doing work at home, entertaining themselves at home. And so now it's, oh, well, hey, the video is lagging. So therefore, of course, I want five, uh, 5G. So it's almost even propagating a uh, excitement for uh, broader bandwidth, if you will, faster download speeds. Um, yeah. Uh, and so that's just, uh, that's amazing to me that uh, uh, you have something that is so precarious, but, and someone had said uh, really recently to me that um, the tobacco industry and the cell phone industry are very similar in the way that they marketed these things. They uh, really blanketed over and really denied a lot of research that uh, was coming out around the health concerns of of these technologies and uh just wondering what uh, you know about the cell phone industry itself are people doing um you know are people doing the due, due diligence and and how does the world health organization uh come to um you know are they believing that uh, this is safe or not I know that they had talked about it as a possible carcinogen, um, but uh, I, yeah, just wondering what you know about that. Well, I think it's what, one every 400 feet. So every house, as you say, probably got a window and you're looking at a transmitter. And so how many people want that type of power out near them? Right? They make the argument a lot of time that there's nothing wrong with the cell phone, it's only one watt, nothing do anything at that lower power but the, these transmitters are definitely out there for a lot. and you know it, 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 it's you have to go kind of deeper into the psyche of the average human in terms of like, telephone poles going up and no one ever questioned telephone poles going up and, and no one ever questioned you know whether it's that the uh, What's that technology? Telegraph. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> like, no one probably questioned the telegraph when it came in. Nobody questioned the telephone poles as they got up because it was this new new technology. There was large infrastructure companies or people that were putting it in. And at that point, every the individual human didn't have a choice. Didn't really have an understanding probably what was occurring. Now, you know, we're a little bit more sophisticated. We have this uh, internet. Every human being can do their own research and we can start to give feedback as to what we want to participate in as an individual. And it, it takes, I don't know, 
it's, it's just, a, it's something I don't see in a lot of people. It's, it's like a, a direct question of whether these governments and corporations have our good in mind. And so if they're implementing something like smart meters and they're doing it without permission, and they're doing it in a, in a, they're using force, you're either going to pay more money or the cops are going to come in and put it on the building. And these things are actually not good for you. You know, they are going to, you know, long-term effects on your health, smart meters are going to be negative, but you had to put them on your home and it just happened. And as humans, we put up with things. We just, a lot of things happen to us that we don't think we have any control over and we just go along with it. There's a whole generation of baby boomers that just went along with it. And now the youth of the, of the planet are, are questioning the decisions made by these other generations. And now, because the internet was, you know, they were born into the internet as it always is this way, they have a skill set and an understanding of how to use the technical devices that far exceeds the baby boomer generation is used to just saying, okay, okay, okay. So there is a huge generational gap of techno technological ability and also the desire for more choice in, in the health impact that we're going to get from decisions made by larger government corporations. And I think in this case, this is like a line in the sand where the youth of the planet needs to rise up and say no. And um, perhaps little videos like this can help in some regards. It's amazing that an essential infrastructure, you know, right now we're looking at what is essential and so many people are at home. So much of their life is dialed back. And so it's like, okay, well, you know, going to the movies was not essential. It, you know, going to, you know, every store that we wanted, some clothing boutique and getting clothing from that store, well, that's no longer essential. Okay, so all these things are dialed back. But it's funny that the internet is now become the most essential link. I think, you know, if they said, you know, okay, you are only gonna get one hour of internet a day, or you are going to get, you know, rations for food and we're gonna tell you exactly what you're gonna eat, choose one or the other, they'd probably choose the rations of food and unlimited internet, you know? And so they really do have us in that position now. And, and it is, it's a societal jostling where you know, you're settled into place. I, I'm really, I'm looking at people all of us as we're in our homes and we do seem like kind of domesticated animals and you know when you know you have the animals out to pasture and then they're all called back into the barn and and, and then they just hunker down there and you have like this exactly you know you have these big bulls huge animals that could just bust down the fence but they're just there you know they're just in their corral and just kind of chilling out and so we're past the initial phase it seems which is you know people were locked down and it was even offensive to talk about keeping your immune system up i i think a, something that i really saw was a complete lack of um of input from natural health care practitioners who are experts on the immune system and keeping the immune system up and that almost seemed like it was unpatriotic to be talking about these things and so we were really left with no you have one option and that is you we're going to isolate everybody and we are going to wash our hands and so uh I was interested in when Wim Hof, if you know him, he's a great yo yogi and he's been in a part of a lot of scientific experiments on the immune system and him doing his practices and then taking a vial of blood and then injecting it with, with different bacterium and then finding that even with E. coli, he was able to battle that back. And so he released a video saying, look, when you're in quarantine, 
do not accept that you cannot do anything. Don't go passive, go active. Do your practices, keep your immune system up and spread the word that you can change your deep state. You can change your immunology through your body, through doing practices. And so that, so that was one of the only people that I really saw coming out at first saying, don't go passive. And so, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's very interesting. Well, it, it does seem as if there's a bit of a planetary reset in many ways. And that, like when in our history has the world shut down for like two months, three months. And it's in these stages, but for us, it's stages of acceptance. For those in power, it's stages of design. And we are being led like those cows <laughs> into the barn. And, you know, it's... Being in the barn isn't, isn't so bad, but it's like when you get those things that are gonna get stuck to your tits and sucking your milk out, now you got a problem. And I, I saw this guy raise, uh, I can't remember his name, but he raised this, the worst case scenario beginning. And it was, you were going to have to be vaccinated. And inside the vaccination was gonna be an RFID chip. And, Anyone who didn't get vaccinated, wasn't shipped, couldn't get access to a, note, a new global currency built on the blockchain. So they're, building, they're creating this global currency that then is going to create money. Then it's going to be controlled, of course, by the freaking nut balls. And if you don't, you won't get access to that unless you get the vaccine. And inside the vaccine is the chip. Like, it, can it get any worse? Like, that's it's 1984, you know. Uh, times 10 kind of thing. It's, 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 it's like the, the cows finally are in their stalls, their, their, their things are attached, and now it's like the matrix will be sucked dry by this large parasitical something that must have consciousness beyond being a human, because how can humans treat each other like they do in terms of larger design of home situations? Like I've said, drones, like actually some drones to grow weddings and things like that. It's just like the, the actions of these freaking nutballs in terms of their military mind, enemy mindset, are so beyond, let's say, the average Canadian who hasn't grown up in a war environment, hasn't grown up thinking about those invading the country. We're thinking about where, where's the next beer, where's the next snack, where's the next joint. No one's thinking about who we're going to go invade. But the freaking nutballs, they think about and design plans to go invade and then ruin whole countries. And this is, this is a mindset. And this is a mindset that has been in the history books kind of glazed over as saying, this is just the way it happened. This is, there are some kings here, it's some wars here, it's occurred. And, you know, in history class, you read about it, you watch the movie, you think you know, you know what it is, but it's essentially wholesale slaughter and uh, stealing. Right? It's like you're stealing everything from this other country, and it's not the country that's getting the, the, the resources, it's this group of people that convinced everyone to go do this. And so there's these multiple narratives. There's these narratives where we have been given the history to justify insanity. And now we come into the present moment where you know, I'm a conscious human being. I can look at 9 11 and say it's a bunch of crap, and they lied, and they, were, they, they, they didn't. Talked about weapons of mass destruction. They talked about some kind of cave. That's all lies. It's all bullshit. Everything you talk about is lies. And so when you, you you look at something like the virus and 5G, there's this cover of lies that if they get repeated enough, then become the norm. Because it's hard to Layers of this message all over again. You know, kind of things take it in and just go along with the program. And now you don't have to do that. There's enough of us, there's enough conscious human beings that can stand up and tell the rest of the people, oh, don't go near the cliff. You know, it's not a good idea. I mean, I know you like running and I know you like your friends and I know you think you're going to have a good time, but there's a cliff and you're all going to die. And that, that's, that's what's happening. You know, these mm -hmm. humans are acting like lemons in this group mindset that is just so indoctrinated from our, our school system. Well, it seems so 
I really like what you said about how um, we get gradually comfortable or we're made comfortable with things. And uh, I, I can't help but wonder if a part of this is a flexing of social control. We see how does the population um, respond? And well, we responded very, very uh, quickly. And, uh, you know, we really did our parts. We all stayed in our homes. You know, we all uh, lo lost our jobs. You know, we all uh, gave up all, all of this for public health and safety. And yet the irony is, is that we have something that is going on, a rollout of an unproven technology that actually could threaten, this is an existential threat, or at least a possible threat, and we don't know. The people that say that they know, there's no way of knowing uh, what, you know, um, five years exposure of this is. You know, we, it, it is something that is unproven. Um, I want to talk a bit about um, Wuhan, China. And uh, now I heard that 5G was rolled out in the city and that that is actually the first city that was, it was actually the network was installed and then turned on. And, uh, and I just want to get your response to that, what uh, you thought of all of that. I mean, if people are, are doubting what we're saying, I mean, that, that's an extraordinary piece of information. I mean, to think that the 5G rollout in China is, is in the same city as this virus appears. Seeing the correlation, you see the connection, uh, and then, you know, honest, almost automatically, 20 million people are quarantined. You couldn't even comprehend that. That's like almost half of Canada. Comprehend that. Just boom. And then you, and you're going like, okay, so you're quarantined, but now you've got 20 million people, you know, all in one area. Like, it's, it's a city. So, you, you know, it's just China. It's like a, a lot of people. So, anyway, that's not much more to add to that. It, it just, some things seem so simply, so simple that you can't, can't even go beyond. Well, it's a, I request, if anything, it's just the, the space, you know, the, the psychic space to be able to contemplate these questions and to be able to look at this. Uh, you know, we're talking about, like, if we look at what the COVID-19, um, you know, we're talking about a cough with no phlegm, right? We're talking about an increase in temperature. Um, and so these symptoms, I mean, they could be many things or, and I'm not, I still, I don't know if viruses are, are real or not, or contagious or not. I mean, I know that they do exist obviously, but I, I do wonder what are the, um, effects on a human what's the environment within a human to either a be susceptible to something that is spreading or b to have a viral outbreak within your body what are the accumulative effects that are uh, needed in order to create this health crisis mm -hmm. um yeah and so is it possible that uh, these increased frequencies are putting a stress on us? You know, we're not even asking, you know, yes, they do accept the fact that these frequencies increase your temperature. Um, if exposed directly to the frequencies, but they're not talking about the, uh, the electrical uh, disruption due to the water destabilization again. So, yeah, all these things are interesting, aren't they? Um, how much, do you know how much more time we have? I think we're coming near the end, right? Yeah, we're at 40, about, yeah, pro probably about a half an hour, I'd say. That's it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know, right? We burn through our facts. <laughs> We're running out of things to say. Look, everybody, wake up. <laughs> wake up. And, and, you know, it really is a thing of, for me on my end, you know, I saw five, 5G, you know, yes, I was like, oh, God, that looks bad. That looks like a higher number than 4G. Uh, but I didn't know that this is 100 times more a hundred times more. Now, that's not just twice as much. You know, it, it, it's hard for the, for the human brain to actually grapple with how much more frequency we're talking about in mm -hmm. us and how unusual it is. You know, we don't really think of ourselves as electrical beings. You know, we think of ourselves as skin and bone. But the fact that your heart can be thrown off it itself is a very sensitive electrical organ. And now we're talking about disrupting or introducing unknown fields. And again, it's something that is not even thought of. Now the CRD is, uh, they are completely behind it. In fact, like the DFO, the, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, are responsible for two things, right? They are responsible for the, um, you know, for the protection of wild species in the oceans, but they're also responsible for the promotion of aquaculture. And so it was like when you had the canola oil and Canada owned a patent on GMO, you know, rapeseed on the canola until someone said, how can you be regulating something that you own a patent on? So the DFO was doing this as well. How can you actually police an industry that you're invested in? Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at the CRD saying, wait a second. So you're, you know, your explicit official position is that we are promoting 5G and all of its exciting possibilities for application in Canada. And yet you're also responsible for policing and making sure that this is healthy. Again, we have this, this conflict of interest that is built in to government being involved with business and how can they actually, you know, police themselves? It becomes a schizophrenic uh, situation at best. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's, that's one of the many ironies or juxtapositions that the human mind has a hard time coming to grips with. And at some point, we have so many in our lives, we just kind of shut down and go along with whatever's going on. I mean, everything's too big, right? Everything's so much. But if we, if we look at the internet that we have right now, we like, look at movies, like I don't have to send a quicker email. You know, I, it's, it's not gonna really help me to have a quicker email. And here we are probably at you know, one of the largest bandwidth uses that Zoom has been so good at, at, at mastering. It's like a two-way video call. Right? This is where it's gonna create a lot of data online and it's fine. It's a 200 million person increase, I think, on Zoom since this whole thing happened. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and they actually just admitted to a, um, a, a hack within Zoom where they, there, there, there were several fractures within their programs that allowed hackers in now to be able to get passwords from account users and even crack into the eye cameras on, on the iPhone and the Macs to be able to hack into their cameras. And they just released this apology the last couple of days. So we are talking about a, a, a huge, yeah, a huge breach, but also just a huge increase in all of this. And, you know, other parts of the world live with brownouts. They live with the rolling brownout, you know, the same as water sharing, the same as, you know, 
we don't run our dishwashers during the day because we're encouraged to do it at night. So we know, we know that we have to um, really play a game of musical chairs with everything in life, except we don't want that when it comes to the greatest illusion, which is, you know, we can have a wireless system we can have a wireless system here that is um, streaming whenever we want. So we basically want an Apple ad, you know, a as our life. Everything is sleek. Everything looks like the Pottery Barn. And we can just plug in whenever we want. So it seems to take a certain amount of maturity to deal with the, uh, the reality of the situation instead of actually giving up our freedom to to actually see if something is safe and so what i'm getting in conclusion is is that the uh, cell phone companies the what you know the wireless companies and the government are really saying no just just don't even think about it we're installing these things as quickly as possible within five years they say 99 percent of America is going to have access to 5G technology. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be great. <laughs> or we could do what you're saying, which is stop, let's all look at this, insist that we are really studying this and um, yeah, flexing our muscles a bit again. Well, I think it's gonna come at the community level where you know, if you're going to test something out, test it out in the communities of life, test it out in the community, in the country, but it still won't test out the whole, like, what's going to happen when you get the whole planet involved. That's like a big jump. But if, let's say, within these cities, there, there's a, a thousand percent increase in participations, you know, within, you know, days or weeks uh, of it taking off, then there's a correlation, and that's why, I mean, these guys are smart. These people, you know, by, by using the virus pandemic, you know, you, no one's gonna question it, no one's gonna jump on the bad wagon. I mean, we're, we're like on the fringe of the conspiracy theorists, because even those guys, I haven't seen them all put together. And, I mean, over the years of kind of being in the same situation, there, there's a, you, it's hard, to keep one's heart passionate about wanting to stop insane things because you just get pounded. We're not organized well enough. And I believe that we need to form teams. We need to start to form teams together. At general media, those teams can form together. And then, and then those other larger teams can form into share knowledge communities. And it's, it's like when you had the same stuff, this thing, but it found that in order to survive, other things that come together to form a larger organizational entity. And I, I feel that's what's happening to humans right now. Where the old corporation, co-ops, or anything from the old paradigm aren't, don't take into account the internet for what it is. Don't take into account the, the, the transformation that's currently into technology. And that humans have to start banding together, using their higher spiritual gifts, using what they really want to do, and to offer to the world a new way of being and that it's, it's really going to be centered on the laptop and being able to work anywhere you want. I mean, there really is a huge potentiality of coming back to small seeds and things that are just creating a life in nature with technology. And that was the work was like that. I was living in the forest. Holy cow, you feel like two, three hundred percent better. As soon as you come to the city before 5G, could feel the effects of the city on you. So living in a large city these days is going to be increasingly bad for your health. And I think the smart, intelligent humans are going to move into smaller eco villages and they're going to create lifestyles there. And they're going to be the ones that survive if in fact there is some great pandemic and 5G does create something for humans to start popping off like that. People got to start thinking about the future, where they get their food, where they get their water, you know, who they're living with. Uh, 
because it's, it's the time of Hopi, Hopi prophecy. It's time of everyone is pointing to now, saying, uh, if you guys don't wake up, you guys are going to die. And this is something which you really have to take into account. Well, it's such a time of, uh, of action. And uh, I mean, we've seen a lot of action, both, of course, as we're talking about from, you know, from industry and government. I mean, you know, we have social distancing rules, except for when it applies to, um, you know, work camps. Uh, you know, you have people in the, the oil industry, you have, uh, you know, pipelines still being uh, laid down as quickly as possible. Um, and so they're not stopping. But also you see on the other side of things, really positive things, uh, you know, where exactly food security. What I'm excited about, if we can talk about what I'm excited about, is, uh, you know, you have um, the hole in the ozone layer getting smaller, markedly smaller, because so many people have stopped driving every day they're not driving all the time so that's awesome you have uh you know dolphins showing up in vienna uh you know uh, you have uh you know in the uh waterways this is like wow for the first time you have la And w the biggest thing that is in my mind is you have Victoria just started where I live in Victoria, BC. You have uh, the city council has just allocated space within their, their greenhouses for their gardens that are usually allocated for ornamental plants. They have just ordered 50 to 75,000 food plants to be grown in uh, these greenhouses that are run by the city. And so we're turning from the garden city to the real garden city. And so this is such a, a, an opportunity to take away the, um, you know, this juggernaut of California and Mexican food being brought up into Canada you know, that is draining the Colorado. You know, if you think how much of our agriculture is reliant on one river that is draining the, you know, the Colorado. Trickling little brook or just a little divot. There's nothing left of, of the water. And so hopefully with this forcing us to become more self-reliant you know we are adapting we're adaptable creatures that's why we've gotten so far so i'm really hoping to see a massive shift where the big corporations that are selling us food they always say oh well we're bound by contracts that even when we could buy local food we're bound to these companies and so therefore we have to sell you things from california even though you're in the middle of your growing season you know and so hopefully with all of this that is going to be one of the positive casualties in all of it. So I, I'm hoping that we have some positive change here when it comes to all this, because it's, it's, it's most likely going to be a real mix of things. Do, would you agree? Sorry, Elijah, your um, audio. Well, we, we seem to have lost our audio feed with Elijah. Uh, <laughs> this has been uh, a great mute. Just, just press on mute there. That's uh, the bottom left hand corner, I think. <laughs> Elijah is signing off. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our, just our first talk. We're just kind of getting into all this and getting a sense for ourselves 
the lay of the land around all of this. Uh, thank you, Elijah, and uh, I'm, I'm Yogi Shambhu. And until next time, keep thriving, keep alive, keep questioning, and we'll see you next time.